Hey, what's up guys, it's Jonathan here. So one of the most recent trends in the stock market is investing in metaverse plays. And there's many different ways you can invest in the metaverse. There's different publicly traded companies that you can invest in. There's tr different cryptocurrencies you could buy. You can even invest into the metaverse by buying special NFTs like virtual real estate. But of all these different ways that you can invest into the metaverse, one of my more favorite ways is to invest in a company called NVIDIA. So in this video, we'll go over what NVIDIA does as a company, why I'm bullish on this company as a metaverse play, and we'll do some fundamental and technical analysis. I'll give you my conclusion on the stock overall. So if any of that interests you guys, stick around. And also, if this video provides any value, please consider hitting this like and subscribe button. They both greatly help out the channel and help push this video out to as many people as possible. So let's get right into it. So let's first start off with what NVIDIA does. NVIDIA is a multi-technology company. This company has a lot of verticals in both the hardware and software space. And they have so many verticals that honestly, I can make a whole separate video just talking about the verticals that this company has. So to keep this concise, I'll just focus on the verticals that I think are the most pertinent to Metaverse. When it comes to their hardware side of things, they're mostly known as the company that invented the GPU or the graphics processing unit. And what a GPU does is a special processor that's in the majority of computers that are made nowadays, and they help accelerate graphic renderings that you see on your computer. So a perfect example of this is if you're watching a video in 4K. A GPU will help process this image onto your screen. And NVIDIA was the company that initially brought GPUs to the market. And that's obviously significant for the metaverse. On top of the invention of the GPU, also invented a program called CUDA. And what CUDA is, is that it's pretty much a programming that allows GPUs to do general computer processing. A computer processor is the brain of a computer. And I'm not a computer scientist or computer engineer or anything like that. So please, if I'm wrong, let me know in the comment section below. But essentially what the processor does is that it's the brain of the computer. So it solves a multitude of different complex math equations to produce results and images. The CUDA program enables GPUs to be able to process this computing power as well. And this technology has enabled GPUs to be used in multiple applications. And most recently, very um, computer power intensive processes. Things like crypto mining, gaming, and operating supercomputers. In addition to the hardware verticals that, they, that this company offers, they also have software products like the Omniverse. The Omniverse is a software developed by NVIDIA that allows creators to sync different creative assets from various programs to create one unified asset. So let's say there was a home that was designed on Revit. You wanted to combine that rendering that you made to another rendering that you made from a different program. Those two programs traditionally wouldn't be able to speak with each other, but with the Omniverse, they will be able to speak with each other and create one product from these two different assets. And as you can imagine, this could be very pertinent to the metaverse, as the metaverse will have many creators bringing their assets into the metaverse to be able to trade them with other metaverse users. So there's three main reasons why I'm very bullish on this company in the long term. The first reason is Main Street adoption. So I did a little bit of market research and I was looking at computers that require a lot of GPU power. And these are usually gaming computers. One thing I noticed is that about 70 to 80% of the gaming computers I saw use NVIDIA GPUs. More favored than AMD and it's way more favored than Intel. And also I noticed that a lot of the more popular gaming computers like Dell's Alienware and Asus all use the NVIDIA GPUs. And just recently, the Canadian crypto miner HUD8 bought $30 million worth of mining machines powered by NVIDIA GPUs. So from my research, I've noticed that not only are NVIDIA GPUs very popular GPUs, but they're also very popular for machines that are looking for very high level computing power. And for what I've seen in the world, it seems like computing power is a very powerful asset. So to have a company that's leading the way in computing power, I think is a very big deal. So the second reason why I'm so bullish on this company is because it has very high margins. Looking at their previous earnings statements, this company usually brings anywhere from 25 to 35% of their profit to the bottom line, which gives this company a lot of room in, when it comes to price and power. 
And this is really important, especially for the situation that we're in ec economically. Currently right now, the big topic of debate is inflation, but there is some fear that we may actually make a very strong U-turn to the other side and see strong deflation. And in a situation like that, you would want to invest in companies that have very high margins. Also, just in general, for me, I like companies that have high margins. So for me, that's another big reason why I really like this stock. The third reason why I like this stock, and I mentioned it at the beginning of this video, but this company has multiple verticals. And I think that this does a couple things for this company. First, it allows them to continue to grow at a pretty solid rate. One of the big things that um, NVIDIA is working on is that they're actually developing software to simulate driving situations, to develop their own self-driving AI. And these different verticals that they have, that I think really diversifies their income streams. And that makes this company from a financial standpoint, very stable. And this is very important for a mature tech company like NVIDIA to have. So doing some fundamental analysis on this company, they have a really great balance sheet. They do have a lot of cash and cash-like securities on the books, and this allows them to be able to cover their short-term liabilities. So this company is not even on the list of the fear of bankruptcy. And for some of you dividend investors out there, this company does pay out a 0.05% dividend. So it's not to the level of a REIT, but it's still a dividend nonetheless. And it's not bad for a company that's still growing. Looking at their operating expenses, the pandemic has enabled them to become a more efficient company as their G&A has become a lower percentage of revenue. But even though that this is the case, we also have to remember we are in a semiconductor shortage. So the most popular product that NVIDIA sells, which is their GPUs, are currently out of stock and back ordered. And because of that, we have to realize as well is that NVIDIA does not have to do much marketing to push out their products. So as a part of their G&A costs, they actually um, include their sales costs as well. And sales costs would usually include marketing. So if you are going to buy this stock and hold it for the long term, this is something that you have to watch out for. Will the G&A compared to revenue stay the same or will it tick up a little bit as the competitiveness of buying GPUs starts to lower when the semiconductor shortage starts to retreat, which most people are expecting that to happen somewhere in the middle of next year. Let's watch out for that. Another thing about their expenses as well is that they do have high R&D expenses. And there could be some concern that if we continue to see wage growth, that this R&D cost will start continue to go up as well. But from what I know about that field, they're not going through the cost of labor struggles that we see from a lot of these restaurants and grocery stores and these companies that tend to hire a majority of uh, minimum wage workers. So this may not be as much of a concern, but it's still, again, something good to watch out for. So Wall Street expects this company to grow 20% next year. And I personally can see this company growing at that rate as well. So, and that's really good for a company that's this mature and this stable financially. So if you project that growth out for the next two years, that would leave you with about a 70 price to earnings ratio, which is high for the industry when you compare it to AMD and Intel, which I believe AMD is somewhere around 50 PE and Intel is somewhere around nine. But it makes sense given all of the innovative products that this company is currently developing. So in two years, I can see the stock selling for $322 a share. And currently, NVIDIA is trading for $324 a share, which indicates, at least from my numbers, that this stock may be a little ahead of itself. So moving on to technical analysis, this stock has been on run ever since the spring of 2021. And there's some strong support for the stock somewhere around the 225 range. But... After you get past that 225 range, the next strong support doesn't appear until about 300. So if we see the price drop from its current price of 324 a share, and we see it dip below 300, it does have a long way to fall before it finds any kind of support. So something that you should watch out for when it comes to the stock is the possibility of seeing interest rate hikes. There has been a lot of talk recently that software company valuations have started to get compressed due to the fear of rising interest rates. This company is not solely a software company, but a good chunk of the revenue does come from the software products. So this is something to keep in mind that this company may have some headwinds in front of it coming into 2022. So for me, I really like the direction this company is going and I really like their financials. 
And I have started buying some of this stock to establish a position. And right now it, it currently makes 0.15% of my portfolio. Because of what I said about interest rates, I think that the valuation of this company as a whole is going to start to become compressed, leading for the price to fall. So for me, when I, anytime I buy a new position, I usually like to buy some to establish it, even if I think it's at sky high prices, because you never know, it might continue to move up. I'll, I never build out the position that I actually want in the company. So let's say I wanted to build out a 10% position in a certain stock. I would, the way I would do it is I'll probably buy the first 1% immediately. I'll wait for it to fall a little bit more to the price that I want it at, and then I'll start to buy it more frequently. So given that, I probably wouldn't buy any more of the stock until it started to fall somewhere inside the 250 range. And I'll be more aggressively buying the stock around the 225 range. And if for whatever reason the stock was to fall all the way to a point where it had a one in front of it, I'd probably take out margin to buy the stock. As I think that it's going to have a really solid future ahead of it. I like thank you guys for watching. So if this video provided you any value, please like, share, and subscribe. Let me know what you guys think about this company in the comment section down below. I would love to hear from you guys. Check me out on all my social medias. I try to post there as often as possible. And thank you so much for watching. I'll see you in the next video.